That was a magnificent 100 by David Gow. 129 not out at the close. Mike Gatting, 86. Well, he wasn't far behind him in expertise and power out there today. 281 for three at the close. Stick, John Bracewell, second from the bottom. 11 overs, one maiden, none for 51. Coney bowled just four overs. Evan Gray bowled extremely well. 18 overs, four maidens, none for 47. Hadley, the two wickets to fall early. And then Chatfield came in with Alan Lamb's wicket. At the close of play, England, a terrific job done by those two players who shared a partnership of 219. England just six runs to 81 for three. We pick up play now with the second ball of the second over. Two runs have been added. Evan Gray, the New Zealand left arm spinner, is the bowler. Mike Gatting is taking strike. Oh, he dropped him. Mike Gatting was never to the pitch of that one. Almost uh, a shot he dreamed up overnight. And thought, well, I must attack Evan Gray. And very first ball he faced, down he went. Just a shade of luck in Gatting's favour. Well, this is, as you say, Tony, it was uh, almost premeditated, that one. He got nowhere near the pitch of it. Good bowling by Gray. It's Chatfield now to Gatting. And he gets a little bit of help. when England were wanting to really press along trying to do it without quite getting in I feel just four runs out of the day and David Gard goes we're in Chatfield at the bowler but still a marvellous innings and this is the opportunity of quite a good crowd here at the Oval to congratulate Gard Go Chatfield 131 Well, this is fairly typical. There were plenty of moments on Saturday when that could have happened. David Gow took chances and they all came off. And this time, a little inside edge just happens to have gone right back on the stuff. His partnership with Mike Gatting, 223 runs. And the long-awaited return to test cricket of Ian Botham. This was a little wide, and Davis just played at the pitch of the ball, trying to square drive it, cross bat it. So as Ian Botham comes to the crease, England are two runs behind. New Zealand, great expectations. I'm not sure if even Ian Botham can live up to the great fanfares for his return in the press. Evan Gray to Gatting. Short. And Mike Gatting says thank you very much. Well, it's a very pugnacious Mike Gatting. He's not wasting any time. That's noble stuff. It takes a real effort of will to decide right. I'm going to start cracking straight away. Good pull shot. Another well, tremendous blow. This one, he's just got enough room for this one, and it was a bit of a cross batter, but it's gone straight down the ground. So, Mike Gatting just decided he's going to have a go at the spin. Oh, super shot. 
a little pretty chassis, I thought. And then a very fine sweep. And what does that make, Mike? Batting a 100. Well played, the captain. Got a try on forgetting, come to a sticky start, and all the owners of being the first captain to lead a losing series at home against New Zealand, and yet he's got his batting together. Yes, beautifully placed. My, my getting's footwork has been. Uh, exemplary all through this innings against the slow bowlers and here he's given himself room and he's swung the bat so pure and straight over extra cover beautiful stroke sites that's been missing in England cricket the site of Ian Botham on the rampage well he wasn't going to be outdone by Mike Gatting yes good shot Four more for Mike Gatting. Gatting now in his uh, sixth test century for England goes to 114. 84 overs bowled with this ball uh, still to be Chatfield from the pavilion end. Coming in bowling to Gatting. Oops. <laughs> By Gatting. He did himself then. He'd Tried to dummy the bowler, I think he dummied himself. So he pretended to come and then stayed exactly where he was. Oh, just over the top. And not enough power in it to get there. Or is there? Yes, there is. Well, the only man certain of that was Mike Gadding. Scarcely bothered to run. Ian Botham was less confident. Yes, that's what they call the pickup. And he didn't middle it. And. But he got it away for four. Interesting, really, whether New Zealand will take this new ball. I mean, they don't want to attack, they just want to defend. And sometimes it's easier to defend with a soft old ball than with a hard new one. Ball him. And that's a reward for bowling. Absolutely straight line, a decent length. Very difficult man to slot you in Chatfield. Even for Mike Gatting, who's in such colossal form. Superb innings by the England captain. Quick chat to him, both of them. What do I do now, skippers, if he's ever listened to captains too much? Uh, I think he might be deciding how long they should go about this run chase because they really have to get about the business of bowling at New Zealand. All that and a superb innings by Mike Gatting. Sure to get generous applause. And who knows, generous comment from Ted Dexter. Yes, certainly a splendid innings. Always absolutely in tune with the requirements of the situation he supported Gower well early then he got going himself done straight on the attack again this morning the Monday morning but uh, praise also for Ewan Chatfield who's bowled a very steady line the length here this morning under extreme pressure from the batsman and has got his reward so England now is 39 runs ahead 
And if you were to guess how much that last partnership was worth, uh, you might well underestimate it. 41 runs put on by both of them and Mike Gatting. They face 38 balls. Right, the headgear suggests that New Zealand might well take the new ball, certainly a change of bowling. Derek Sterling from the Vauxhall end. Derek Sterling was pretty wild and woolly, worked up a little bit of pace <laughs> early in this innings, but it was, he was quite expensive, six and over, all but. <laughs> And I'm really quite surprised, actually, that uh, they've given Sterling the ball. I think it might just be meat and drink to him, both of them. Oh, we'll see. Oh, yes. <laughs> Not the worst ball. Almost a Yorker again. To see the savage swing of those powerful shoulders yes on the full this time uh, looks as though this new ball is being taken well I'm, I'm really quite surprised at these tactics by Jeremy Coney uh, because as any batsman will tell you if you're in on a good pitch the harder and newer the ball the quicker it goes to the boundary Hadley to both of them is just coming up. Clunk. Well, there's the start of the confrontation. It's a beautiful batting track. Botham has gone to 19. Hadley has the new ball. And away it goes right off the middle. Yeah, well, Liam Botham had the room for the shot. He certainly got the meat of the bat on that one. Trent Bridge, just as though he's caught the train down, walked onto the oval here and smeared it away past cover point. So anything Ian Botham can do, Embury can do just as well. And uh, he really watched this onto the bat. He's, he's steady batsman, Embury. Interesting choice by both them there, electing not to take the single and getting the nod from Embury. That uh, both of them is going to have another go at Sterling. He's got a bit about him, Derek Sterling. He's not going to curl up and allow both of them to call all the tunes. That's good leg break, delivered at uh, fast, medium pace. Both of them had uh, every right to look slightly non plus there. Well, Tony Blaine has the problem here. It's a hell of a ball to have to catch. He circled around it. And I doubt very much if he even touched it in the end. Well, the problem with these, and this one in particular, has gone straight up above Tony Blaine's head, and he's not able to ever get away from it to, to judge where it's going to come down. And he really has gone round and round in circles and hasn't made a glove on it. So, this was the big hit by both of them. If he hit it, it would have gone down to the oval. Well, both of them thought about going and then after a while he thought well he's never going to catch that <laughs> I 
Well, he shouldn't blame himself. It was one of those when they go straight up above your head with that amount of spin off the edge. They're desperately hard to locate and catch. Now they're going to allow both of them single. The men have gone back on the offside. Be up to Embury to take what singles he can. Or both of them to build it around on the onside. Yes, there's large open areas on the leg side, and I thought Ian would be aiming for those wherever the ball pitched. It's short outside the off stump. And I think he'll keep aiming there. There's st still plenty of room in the long on, long on region. I think he'll be going for that one now. They'll take the single. That suits everyone, both them called for it, said yes, he'd take it, and Hadley allowed him to do it. Yeah. 350 came up with that onside boundary from both them, the last 50 in just 48 balls. Now they're trying to save the single. Now they're going to look for two. And they'll get it easily. Get that right off the meat. That's a beautiful shot. That wasn't all that short. Well, this is superb because he didn't have much room to play this one. And I think it, went, in fact, left him a little bit off the pitch. But I think he'd already picked the spot because that was the one remaining area where there was no boundary field. Now for both of them, the field spreads again. There is some room on the offside uh, square of the wicket for him. That's just where he's hit it. It's a good shot. Ball's been flying right off the center of the bat today. 364 for five. Now Botham's 38, Embury six. Man at point goes deeper, but it's not quite deep enough. Straight out. Not quite into the road, but probably only stopped by the scaffolding. Fabulous hit. That's uh, one of the longest parts of the ground. Up down on the diagonal. An enormous shot, this. Slanting down the leg side, beautifully picked up. And uh, in fact, it landed in the bar. Just behind the scoreboard at Long Lake. This will be good experience for Derek Sterling. He won't have come across anything like this for a while out in New Zealand. short of the boundary and one of the bits of experience for Derek Sterling will be to keep the ball up able to drop it short just because you've been hammered 
Yes, uh, not a great piece of bowling this, and Ian Botham having all the time to get inside it. And one of the noticeable things then was that neither of the fielders, long leg and fine leg, saw that ball at all. It's not the easiest field to pick the ball up against the background of the crowd. Uh, the old head of uh, John Wright was in there talking to Sterling. That's more like it. Just needs a bigger boundary, that's all. 50 for both of them. Faced 33 balls. 32 balls both of them faced. And hardly anything came from anywhere but the centre of the back. And this is a tremendous blow. I think Ian was waiting for it to be pitched up. He picked it up beautifully high over long on, the longest boundary on the ground. And just to show he's human, he's missed one. <laughs> There's 54 runs uh, for both of them. All but six of them have come after the take of the second new ball. We had a two and a four with the old ball. 48 with the new one. And the light is worsening here. Wind is increasing. Forecast is not great. had brought the two men in on the offside which is almost an invitation for both of them they say there's a gale sweeping up from the southwest of England which seemed to have arrived a little early in the form of Mr Botham they brought three or four men in to try and save the single there and very sensibly Ian Botham took the four runs which was on offer 24 runs from that over catching the mood short one short arm pull just one more run added from two balls bowl before steady drizzle came across the ground here at the oval and that drizzle later turned into heavy rain 388 for five when the umpires went off the field 131 to Gower his was a sacrifice today trying to force the pace Mike Gatting bowled by Chatfield for 121 he played some magnificent shots today and the whole of the innings today and on Saturday will have given the England skipper a great deal of confidence. Both them 59, that was quite magnificent. 59, a super performance coming in, playing just the right sort of knock, and he smashed Sterling and every other bowler out there and pushed England along to that total, just 12 short of the 400 mark. John Embry with him on nine. The bowling figures for New Zealand, they all suffered out there at the hands of uh, first Gatting, and then both them, Hadley 2 for 92, even the great Richard Hadley took some stick in those circumstances. Sterling 9 overs for 71. Chatfield came out of it very well, 21 overs, 7 maidens, 3 for 73. Evan Gray took some stick, none for 74 in 21. And the match situation at the end of the fourth day, with the rain still belting down, England 101 runs ahead. Well, that, I reckon, is going to be enough. They must close straight away tomorrow. The forecast is not great it's not quite a day and through the night